What's up, freaking world? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. My name is Justin Copeland on this channel, Stay Fresh Productions. We talk about all things dealing with fragrances. Any interest in that kind of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Join the Fresh Squad today, the freshest squad here on YouTube. Elevate, increase, improve, evolve your freshness. Your freshness being you bringing your best self into every situation, treating people with respect. And we use fragrance as a foundation of that. You will feel it and others will smell it. Now, today we have a highly requested video. I've recently done a two-part series, which you can check out a playlist here, of fragrances that every man needs in his wardrobe. Now, again, if you saw that series, you would know that the title is not quite what it seems. And if you wanna know what that means and you haven't seen it, then I do recommend watching those two videos. I was really proud of that concept and I really do appreciate the feedback I got from you guys on those two videos. We did one for designer and niche. I'm probably gonna do one for indie, so we'll see about that. Let me know if you wanna see that. But one of the components of that video was a show-stopping fragrance. Again, you can watch the video if you wanna know the context a little bit more, but I had a lot of you guys ask me, can you do a video on show-stopping fragrances? Let's just extrapolate that topic and do a top 10 on that. So I am delivering. We have 10 fragrances here that I do deem show-stopping fragrances. And what is that exactly? This is something that's gonna stop traffic. This is something that is not for everyone. It is a polarizing fragrance. Some of you will hate it, some of you will absolutely love it, and there's probably not gonna be a lot in the gray area. This is a fragrance that you will generally wear when you're more dressed up, maybe in a formal situation, or when you wanna be a badass. Leather jacket, or whatever it is you're gonna wear on a night out to turn heads, to be provocative. This is a fragrance that will accompany that. I would generally wear these only in the evening time. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but this is what I'm defining as a show-stopping fragrance. So let's dive right into it. I've ordered them basically in terms of my taste. Obviously, any of you who tried all these fragrances, you might order them completely differently. First one up here, this is called Rich Mess, coming from the house of Ryan Richmond. And this is a very powerful leather fragrance, but a very unique one, very brash, harsh leather, almost ashy in a way, but it's mixed with fig. It's mixed with vanilla and sandalwood and saffron. So you have a, a this kind of sweet juiciness somewhere, maybe a touch of grapefruit as well, some citrus, a sweet little juiciness kind of confined in this leather. Now on the skin, it does dry down, still keeping that leather harsh and quite prominent, but you get this very interesting kind of spicy, softer leathery, almost creamy sweetness that kind of shines through as it dries, makes it a little different, kind of gives it some more dimension and personality, but leather through and through, again, not for everyone. I know a lot of people that don't like this fragrance, but I love it. That is Rich Mess from Ryan Richmond. Okay, here at number nine, coming from the house of Sarah Baker, we're talking about Charade. And this is a fragrance that, you know, I really got to be in the mood for it. It is an unapologetic fragrance. It has vibes of something that would have come out decades ago. It has this kind of old school, almost feminine perfume vibe to it, but in a very strong way. It is kind of almost a Sheepra in a way. I think there's a lot of oak moss in here. I do believe there's also a lot of tuberose. So you gotta love a, a pretty strong and pungent white floral scent mixed with some honey, almost animalic in a way and quite woody as it dries. You got a lot of vetiver in here on my skin. Powerful fragrance, again, something that kind of grabs your nostrils. If you walk by somebody, they're gonna notice you. They are gonna smell this. One more thing I wanna note about show-stopping fragrances, they are not guaranteed to get compliments. If that's what you're looking for, if that's what you feel like you need, these may not do it, but they will have an impact on people. They will imprint on people you meet, so much so that, again, they may not give you a compliment on how you smell, even if they like it, but they will remember you, and I think that's more important. Here at number eight, no stranger to the community and maybe no stranger to your collection, we have Tom Ford Black Orchid, originally marketed for women when it came out, if I'm not mistaken, but I do think they kind of switched that as a lot of men started wearing it, and wow, this fragrance, again, so provocative. I do find it quite beautiful. I didn't always love it, but I have grown to really enjoy it now. It is a dark floral. 
it is kind of what it sounds like. It's a dark kind of sweet and earthy creamy floral praline this chocolatey vibe vanilla you can you have that orchid accord so it is floral but in no way powdery or anything like that quite a unique profile even today that is black orchid from tom ford this is definitely going to turn heads still today timeless scent at number seven do i need to say anything about this dior en parfum this is the original i cannot speak for the new formulation i hear mixed things about it but this is powdery, leathery, sweet iris. It's floral, it's quite powdery, but it is darker because of that leather note. It's more intensified, a little bit of oud in here as well, a little bit of rose, uh, just a much darker, richer, deeper experience compared to the predecessors of it, the Orome and Diorome Intense, and something again to wear on a night out when you are feeling posh. You gotta be posh with this one. That's the own parfum. If you can find it, grab it. It's at least a collector's item to have that's just hard to find these days, it's at least in North America. At number six from the house of Javoy, one of my favorites here, we have Incident Diplomatique. Again, not for everyone. By no means the most polarizing fragrance from the house. Private label psychedelic, those might be even more so, and those are great scents, I just don't have them. Nothing smells like this. This is ashy woody earthiness that's what this is in a bottle but there's a class to it there's an elegance here it almost smells wet i always say that it almost smells like there's a boozy quality to the patchouli and the vetiver in this a little bit of nutmeg so it's a little spicy some mandarin orange add a splash of something kind of bright but mostly slightly bitter earthy vetiver but it's filled out with something and it is stunning again and it has this ashy dimension to it that is so different so again a way to turn heads probably not going to get compliments it depends on how you carry yourself it depends on who you're around but still recommend trying this out if you want to stand out incident diplomatique halfway mark number five love this stuff it is a little linear on my skin which is why it's not near to the top at least for my taste once you spray it on you kind of get what you get for the life of the scent but it is captivating if you like this type of profile gucci guilty absolute poor ohm and this is again unapologetic here this is leather this is cypress this is vetiver it's earthy it's kind of woody a little bit green in a way and it's quite medicinal so that medicinal quality is not something that everyone loves to love it or hate it thing i was always captivated by it even when i first smelled it but i was afraid of it so i never bought it it was discontinued i decided to buy it before it was completely gone and unavailable so i picked it up and i'm so happy to have it only wear it on a night out only usually dressed in darker colors if I want to stop traffic, again, people may not say anything. I don't care though. I love it. But they might love it too. Again, especially if you wear it with confidence. And number four from the house of Raja Parfums. Oh my goodness. One of the most just wealthy smelling fragrances I've ever smelled in my life. Unfortunately, the price tag also reflects that. So get a decan if you can. I don't recommend blind buying this. This is Diagolev, again, from Raja Parfums. And this is a Chypre, and it was made to be a very provocative scent. This is based on a lot of oak moss, so quite mossy and dry with some civet, which is a slightly urinal smelling animalic note, but it's blended so well here. So you have a very dry, animalic, mossy, woody foundation, but on top of that, you actually have a fruity floral dimension to this fragrance, which is so interesting. You get peach, you get maybe some citruses in here, you get a melange of florals in here. Again, it just adds so much depth to an otherwise pretty harsh profile. It is mostly bottom heavy, but that sweet floral quality does kind of dance around the top gives it some interest in the air, but that darkness underneath really keeps it on the skin and really captures people. It makes it very, very head turning. This is Diagolev from Roger Parfums. Do recommend sampling if you can. Links to everything below, whatever I can find. Here at number three from the House of Argos fragrances, we got to talk about Bacio Immortel. This is a beautiful leather-based fragrance, nowhere near as harsh as Rich Mess, but the leather is there. 
unmistakable. It's not really animalic at all. It's quite a smooth leather, like leather seats in a car, but there is an authentic sweetness in here from one of the most realistic raspberry notes I've smelled in a long time. That sweet tart quality is in here, along with some violet flower, which is a sweeter floral. So it is a sweeter leather fragrance, but you get some smoky birch wood in here as well. So there's a darkness here, not something that everyone's gonna love. Again, you gotta love leather for this one, but a little bit more approachable than the others. Stunning fragrance, and you can still save money, use fresh tin at checkout. You can buy any bottle, you can get a sample pack if you wanna try Argos. If you've been sleeping on them, get on them now. They're getting ready to release some new stuff pretty soon. So check out the old stuff first before the new stuff comes so you can be caught up. Number two, oh yes, oh yes, Overture Man from Amouage. I still wanna try the woman's version, I hear it's phenomenal. But this is boozy, animalic, woody, and spicy. Very spicy, kind of warm, kind of brash in a way. Not in a urinal type of smell, but it's something that you just, you feel it in the back of your nose. It's kind of scratchy, that animalic quality. But that booziness, the sweet booziness, so cognac really does help to kind of balance it out. That sweetness does kind of even the playing field a bit, so it's not just dark animalic spices. The sweetness is a really nice component here. Not for everyone still, but when I wear this out, I wear it to performances at times, and I'm really trying to make a statement, and this helps with that. That is Overture from Amouage. Stunning, stunning stuff. And at number one, honestly, I was afraid to try this fragrance. When I first heard people talking about it, I figured I'm not gonna like that. And I think a lot of you guys can relate to that experience. You might assume, ah, oh, that doesn't sound like something I've worn before. I don't know if I'm gonna like that. That doesn't really sound good to me because it doesn't sound very mass appealing to people. I was the same way with this fragrance, but the more I started to want deeper and more memorable experiences with my fragrances, I was just drawn to this. There was a gravity that I could not escape and I'm so glad I caved in. It is now discontinued. It might be coming back. I hear murmurs of that, but we'll see. But this is Tobacco Oud from Tom Ford. Again, not for everyone. It is what it sounds like. It is an earthy tobacco, it is a dark oud, not the oudiest oud ever, so don't worry about any kind of stinkiness or funk, not really here, but it's mixed with whiskey and spices, so boozy, pretty sweet, there's a balsamic quality to it, so it's kind of resinous in a way, but that oud and tobacco work so well together, it's dark, it's kind of ashy, again, sweet, boozy, and spicy, and amazing. All black here, you gotta wear all black, that's what I think. Great for the fall and winter, I will be wearing this a lot. I will cherish this bottle as best I can, but I'm gonna get some wear out of it for sure. This is a showstopper, without a doubt. This is Tom Ford Tobacco Oud. Gonna have links to whatever I can find down below where you can try it. Okay, that's gonna do it for me. I would love to know, what do you think of my list of showstopping fragrances? Have you tried any of these? If you have, would you agree? that they are indeed traffic stoppers, that they will stop people in their tracks, that they will make eyebrows go up or jaws drop, or people kind of look at you and linger for a second. Again, maybe not get compliments, but definitely leave an impression and leave a mark on people. If you agree or disagree, I wanna know either one, let me know down in the comments. If you like the video, please like the video. It really helps out with my visibility across YouTube. And once again, please consider joining the Fresh Squad by subscribing, increase your freshness, be the best version of yourself. I'm on the journey to do that and I wanna take you guys with me, so would love to have you as a part of the squad. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace, I'll see you in the next one.